Thank you very much, President Powers. <clears throat> and thank you to my fellow Texas exes for this award. It's such an honor to be thought of <clears throat> as a distinguished alumnus of the Univer University of Texas. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Though I'm sure whatever contributions I've made to UT and its legacy can never begin to compensate for the gifts of insight and inspiration that I receive from this place. My student life at UT, however, was relatively brief. I was only here for one year as a graduate student, earning my master's degree in library science. I had a wonderful undergraduate education at SMU, but let's be frank, Dallas was not Austin. <laughs> From time to time, some hippies were spotted in Dallas, but they were like migratory birds that had been blown off course during a storm. And after a while, it became clear to me that my education could not be complete without visiting their natural habitat. <laughs> Austin was such an exciting and mind-bending place to be in the early 70s. In fact, I've sometimes thought that if a time machine was ever invented, one of the top time travel destinations, right up there with Athens under Pericles, and VJ Day in Times Square should be Austin in 1972. <laughs> I remember Austin as a quiet place that was never quiet. It was a small town that somehow had the buzz of a big city. There was always a place to park and no traffic to intrude on your mellow mood as you drove out to Barton Springs or over to the old El Rancho on First Street or to a ramshackle, out, ramshackle outdoor bar overlooking the lake where you and your friends could watch the sunset and listen to some cosmic cowboy strum his guitar and bare his soul. I felt right at home, even though I was not really hippie material. Case in point, I was a librarian <laughs> who named her cat Dewey after the Dewey Decimal System. <clears throat> if you looked out over the audience that was seated in the beer-soaked concrete floor of the Armadillo World Headquarters, grooving to a young musician named Bruce Springsteen, you would have to look hard to find a future Republican First Lady of the United States. <laughs> but there I was. <clears throat> but even more entrancing than Austin itself was the university at its heart. The world was wildly changing all around us when I was a college student, but UT represented for me something solid and tranquil and eternal. The Harry Ransom Center, where the library school was located at that time, was both a refuge from the world and a portal that led you deeper and deeper into the challenging history of human thought. Even back then, the HRC was on its way to becoming one of the world's great literary archives. And I had the privilege of learning about books and libraries in a building that housed the folios of Shakespeare, the manuscripts of John Keats and the Bronte sisters, and the page proofs of James Joyce's Ulysses. It was not just literary history that I encountered in graduate school. When Lyndon Johnson died in 1973, I was one of thousands of people who lined up to file past the casket of the Texas president as he lay in state at the new presidential library. I shook hands with Lady Bird Johnson and her daughters, Linda and Lucy, never dreaming that one day I would share with them the privilege of having lived in the White House. The University of Texas opened a window for me to the past. It thrust me into the present. It showed me the way to the future. UT introduced me to who I was and what I could dream of becoming. Those of us receiving this recognition today realize that we're representing countless young people from many generations who've received that same crucial gift. Thank you for this honor, and thank you for the, uh, the honor of attending this great university.